Hello and welcome to Module 6 Ether Channel. Um, so don't forget to write your notes and submit them when you're all done. All right, so let's get um, let's get going. Uh, what is an Ether Channel? So here's the definition that I want you to write. Ether Channel is to aggregate multiple links to achieve a higher bandwidth as as a uh, has a higher bandwidth as a channel while providing or tolerances via STP. Ether channel can be used between switches, routers, and servers. So what you're doing is if you have, for example, ports that are empty, that you're not being used, you can bundle them up to get better bandwidth, right? So why not use them? So instead of, let's say they, these are 100 megabits, you can bundle up to six of them if this is a 2960 switch or even eight and some other switches up to eight, so you get 800 megabits of connection. And if one link breaks, then you got 700 megabits. If two breaks, then you got 600 megabits and so on. And you still have redundancy. So you have multiple links and uh, STP doesn't have any problem with it, okay? But all can be seen as one interface. We call that a port channel, okay? So that's that's great. What are the advantages? So here's what I want you to write about the advantages of Ether Channel. Number one, it can be treated as an interface, but with higher bandwidth. Number two, you use existing links. Number three, it can be used for load balancing as well, sending multiple frames on multiple links. And number four, of course, it, it provides redundancy, which means if a loss of a link in the channel, it's not going to change the topology. Here's some restrictions that you should know about. Write the following down as well. Interface types cannot be mixed. So you can't have 100 megabits with a, a gigabit on the other side. An Ether channel, one Ether channel can aggregate up to eight ports full duplex, sending and receiving data at the same time. Number three, the 2960 can support up to six ports. Okay, so that's the most common switch that we're going to, at least we're going to be using in the lab. Number four, the group of port members must be, must be, of the, must be the same. For example, both sides must be trunks and must have the same native VLAN, all right? Don't forget that. Ether channel can be formed through negotiation using two protocols. All right, so the two negotiation protocols are called port aggregation protocol. We'll write that down. Tag P, we call it, and the link aggregation control protocol, LACP. So let's talk about each one of those. Tag P, number one, is what I want you to write. It's a Cisco proprietary protocol. Number two, Ether channel is added to the spanning tree as a single port. Number three, all ports must have the same speed, duplex settings, and VLAN information. Okay, all right. Now let's take a look at the modes each port has to be in. Now, if it's an on, if the port, so you're writing these down, right? On, if port, it forces the interface to channel without pack P. So that means no pack P packets are exchanged. So if you say on, the mode is on on that port channel, it's going to be a channel regardless. It's not going to negotiate with anyone. If the port is PAGP desirable, then it's going to play, place the interface in active negotiation state. If the PAGP is, mode is set to auto, then it's going to place the interface in passive negotiation. So typically what we do is we write one side desirable and the other side auto. We hardly ever force it to be um, a channel. Uh, both sides cannot be, that's important, both sides, as you can see here, cannot write this down. Just write this. You don't have to write all of this down. Both sides cannot be on and then desirable on the other side, desirable auto, or both sides cannot be auto. So if both sides are auto, this side is auto and this side is auto, no good. Or if this side is um, on and this side is desirable auto, no good. Okay? Now let's take a look at the LSAP. Number one, write the following down. 
It's an 802.3 AD. And now we changed it to 802.1 capital A capital X. Okay. That is the standard. It's, it's not on Cisco. It's an IEEE standard, right? Number two, the same benefits and, and restrictions as PACP. So whatever we talked about, the restrictions and the benefits of the protocol of PACP, it's the same thing. LACP allows up to eight links. So that's number three. Up to eight links and eight can be standby. A standby link will become active should one of the current active links fail. That's probably one of the reasons that uh, a lot of Ether channels are configured using LACP. All right. The three modes are pretty much similar to the PACP. So you need to write those down. There's on, active, and passive. On is similar to the on. Pa active is similar to the uh, desirable. And passive is similar to the ODA. Okay? Number five. Both sides cannot be on, you know, so, yeah. Same thing, cannot be on and active passive and cannot be passive and passive, like auto auto, right? All right, so how do you configure? Um, you configure them, well, this is you, you, these are the guidelines. You gotta make sure you got this speed and duplex the same, the same VLAN on both sides and the range of VLANs, um, it's preferable to have the same speed, right? Same range too, that would be great as well all right uh, so here's a typical configuration uh, so you what you do is you say interface please write this down the commands you don't have to write the prompts you type interface range the range of ports that you want so here we want two ports so you type interface range fast ethernet 0 slash 1 dash 2 and then you give it a name channel dash group 1 channel 1 and the mode, we're going to choose it to be active. That means the other side is going to be passive. If you do exactly the same thing, you just write passive here on the other side, on the other switch, right? Uh, and then you exit and you say interface port channel one, because now you have a port channel already created. You make the port strong and you then you specify which VLANs are allowed to travel on the trunk. You don't write that last command, all VLANs will be traveling on this channel. Okay, that's it. It's easy as that. All right. Um, so that's that. To verify some, some of the commands that you're going to need, it's a good idea to write the following commands, at least to know what they are. Uh, show interfaces port channel. That's going to display the general status of the port channel interface. Write that down. Show Ethernet summary, Ethernet channel summary. That's going to display one line of information per channel. Show Ethernet port channel. That's going to display information about a specific port. And the show interfaces Ethernet channel. That's going to display information about the role of the interface in the Ether channel. All right. Um, some common issues you can deal with. That's no big deal. But this is pretty, you know, this is really it. I want you to do so here's a typical switch one configuration right so you did two channel okay so you have channel one I'm sorry no you, you this is how you would remove a port channel right and you got to type no shut to, to activate the channel all right so um, and so that's it for the Ethernet channel. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Ethernet channel chapter. So write everything I asked you to write up and uh, submit that as homework. And I'll see you on the next video.